We already have the main functionality for navigation and the UI for what is going to be displayed to the user. We already tested how we see that new toolbar item at the top right of our application, so both Android and iOS. And we see the main page, of course, listing all of these entries that we're going to need along with the save button. During this section, we're going to add the functionality to save new contacts on a local database. Particularly, we're going to be working with SQLite. This is going to be a very light form of a database. And we're going to be able to work with it entirely locally. Which means, one, that the data is only going to exist inside of the phone where this application is running. And two, that it is going to be quite light to work with it. So to be able to do so, we do not have to code the entire functionality. There have been developers that have created some packages for us to work with SQLite and made it very easy for us to start working with it. All we have to do is make sure that we import the packages that those developers have made available to the public into our projects. So let's learn how to do so in this lecture. On Windows, all you have to do is right click on the solution and select Manage NuJ Packages for Solution and do something very similar to what we are about to do. On Visual Studio for Mac, unfortunately, you have to do this project by project. Again, on Visual Studio on Windows, you can do it for the entire solution in one single step. On Mac, you will have to do it once for every project that you have. So on Mac then, we're going to be able to find the dependencies and find the new J folder. Here in the new J folder, you will have to right click and select add packages. And you will be navigated to this. On Windows, you should now see something very similar after right clicking and selecting Manage NuJ Packages for Solution. Make sure, by the way, on Windows that you are on the Search or the Explore tab, not on the Installed or Updates tab. And in here, we're going to search for a particular package that will allow us to use SQLite. This is going to be the SQLite-net-pcl package and we're going to find someone very important. There are many results in here. Find the one that is called exactly that, SQLite-net-pcl. The one that in fact has a ton of downloads, the one with the most downloads, over a million now. The one by a Frank A. Kruger, and the one that has this cute icon in here. Very important that you select this one. There is another one that is similar, but it has very few downloads and it has an ECP name at the end. Do not select this one. Select the latest version available and hit an add package. Windows is going to be quite similar. You're going to go ahead and install it. Maybe some pop-ups are going to appear for you to accept the license terms, something like that. Here, it is already successfully added. We can see that Visual Studio is letting us know. On Windows, again, you're probably good to go. On Mac, we will have to repeat this same step on Android as well. From the Packages folder, select Add Packages. And now you should see SQLite listed at the top because we have just used it. So select it and select Add Package. And again, repeat this on iOS. In the Packages folder, select Add Packages and add the SQLite package. This is how you add these packages to your project. Now, your projects are ready to start using the functionality that Frank Kruger added to this package. As you will be able to see, the functionality or the code has made it super easy for us to start working with SQLite. So, starting in the next lecture, we're going to make some configurations on Android and on iOS 
so we know where is this database going to be stored. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the next lecture. For now, you just have to keep in mind that Android and iOS have different directories. The operating systems work slightly different. So we will have to kind of like work twice for once in summary forms, maybe the only time that you will have to code slightly different functionality for each platform. But that is the reason because Android and iOS work so differently with files that we will have to do something slightly different. So starting in the next lecture, let's do so on Android.